Today we're going to be taking a look at how to tear down and troubleshoot a Magnavox Odyssey 3000. I mean it could do and this is Retro Revive. I got this Magnavox Odyssey 3000 from a box full of old free electronics that mostly included power adapters and junk like that. I hooked it up to my 19 inch TV here, but it had a problem. The screen would jump every time the puck bounced. Long story short, it was just that the batteries were low, but because I was able to find so little resources out there about the Magnavox Odyssey 3000, I thought I would go ahead with this video anyway to show what I found. Now, a lot of issues from these old electronics stem from different contacts and things getting filthy. And so the first thing I did was take it apart. I removed the battery cover and the batteries. Unscrewed the six Phillips screws in the bottom. and carefully lift it off the bottom, swinging up as to not yank on the wires to the battery compartment. And yikes, I've never seen a mess of wires like this in a console before. Granted, the oldest console I worked on before this was a Vader Atari 2600. To see under the boards, I unscrewed the three Phillips holding the motherboard and two holding the RF module. Then I opened the RF module by twisting the metal tab straight with pliers. I searched in vain for broken connections and decided to not take it apart further because all of the wires were soldered in. To clean it, I carefully blew out the dust with some canned air, wiped it down with a damp cloth and sponge, cleaned out the crevices with an old toothbrush and warm water, and then I scrubbed the boards front and back with a toothbrush and some rubbing alcohol. It looked a million times better, but after all the cleaning, the glitches still remained. So then I thought, uh, maybe it was a bad solder joint somewhere. And after taking it apart and looking it over again, I noticed that one of the wires running from the RF module had hardly any solder on the motherboard end. I added more solder, but the glitches still remained. And I noticed this time around that it was also jumping every time the speaker made a noise. So I thought maybe the video wires are getting interference from the speaker wires somehow. And I wrapped the wires going to and from the RF module in tin foil for extra insulation. And of course it made zero difference. Like I said, I wasn't able to find much of anything online. But what I was able to find was a copy of the Magnavox Odyssey 3000 service manual. And I have a PDF of it in my blog for download. I saw that there were a couple things that you could address with a flathead screwdriver. The first was the voltage on the motherboard, and all I noticed from that was the change the pitch higher and lower, and so I just changed that back to normal. The second was something to adjust on the RF module, and what that does is it varies the frequency. Of course, neither of these ended up doing anything either. In the end, I just ended up swapping out batteries for new ones because I needed to take this system to an event and I needed it to last a long time. And lo and behold, that fixed the problem. While this was a bit of a wild goose chase, I hope this video proves useful to someone out there who's trying to find out more about the Magnavox Odyssey 3000 or trying to work on it. Like always, there's an accompanying written blog on my website at retrorevive.enicdo.com. And if you like this video, let me know in the comments below. Let's see if I can do it in the viewfinder. Ah, it's really hard to see. So small.